So, um, as I was kind of uh, meditating on this, you know, I had a couple other different things that I, I was thinking on uh, as far as working on this, and uh, I was over, I was getting ready to go over to uh, Monte's. Uh, we had a, a fun little gathering fellowship, and um, just before that, the Lord had put something on my mind. Just dealing with 2016, um, last week, for those of you who missed it, uh, we talked about that uh, God wants a testimony left there. Meaning wherever God has you for a school, job, your family, no matter what you go through, God wants a testimony about who he is, what he has done in your life, what he's able to do in, your, in other people's lives. He wants a testimony left there. He don't just want you to go through things just to go through it and say, hey, I made it out. Thank the Lord. I don't want to go through that again. Let the Lord mess with somebody else. There's 7 billion people in the world. Surely the Lord can allow Satan to mess with somebody else other than me. You know what I mean? I got other things to deal with. So it was, it was really awesome. The Lord had his way tonight. Um, we're going to deal with an awesome topic. We're going to deal with three individuals who are uh, uh, definitely anointed um, people of God. Um, and the Lord brought these things to mind. And the topic tonight is going to be uh, committed to the cause. Committed to the cause. Um, we live in a day and age again that a lot of people aren't really committed, you know, to the cause of the Lord. They're not committed to the things of God. They are easily uh, swayed and pulled aside by crazy things because they're not rooted in the things of God and the Word of God. And they so easily allow the enemy to slip in and so tears on the word where while they're asleep. Meaning sleep spiritually, not sleep naturally, because we all got to sleep. I need sleep. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's during a time when they sleep spiritually and they try to figure out who sold these tears. And it, it comes to mind when it's too late that an enemy has done this. So it, it's something that will encourage us tonight and it's definitely encouraged me that being committed to the cause Whatever God has put in us to do, whatever he's called us to do, to be committed to it in 2016, no matter the opposition that comes up against us, no matter what the numbers look like, doesn't matter what everybody else is saying, just being committed to the cause because of the fact that God called us. And that's the only person's opinion at the end of the day that matters anyway. As long as we show up and we show the Lord that we're willing to be where he has us, that... Um, and we're willing to be committed. So we'll, we'll go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. If everyone will bow their heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gathering. God, I thank you for another awesome opportunity that you've given us to be here. We know the grass withers and the flower fadeth away, but your word shall stand forever. Father God, we give you thanks and praise, Father God, for your word, oh God. So many right now, Father God, get persecuted for your word, oh God. So many people, Father God, are forsaken your word, oh God. But God, we give you thanks and praise Amen. for your word, oh God, for allowing your word to keep us even at times when we don't even want to be kept, oh God. We thank you for your word, letting us know that we're not alone oh God, that you're with us always, oh God. We thank you for your word, Father God, guiding us and ordering our steps, giving us a word even in the midnight hour, Father God, when we feel like we're not going to make it. God, we thank you for your word, Father God, that's able to destroy yokes and break bondages and bring people out of captivity. God, we thank you for your word. Your word is awesome, oh God. We bless you and thank you. No, we ask tonight, oh God, that you would anoint your word, anoint your servant, that I may speak the things concerning your people, Father God. Tailor your word to where everybody is that's coming that's in this room right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, cause the flesh to sit down, that the Spirit may speak to your people in this hour. Hide me behind the cross, oh God, that your Spirit may have free reign, oh God. Feel free to move, Father God, and say what you want, oh God. This is your people. This is your word. This is your hour. So have your way, Father God. I'm your humble servant. Have your way tonight. I thank you and I bless you in advance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Committed to the cause. Committed to the cause. As Jonathan hits the screen, and one of the first characters we're gonna deal with three characters tonight: David, uh, Nehemiah, and the apostles. And as far as dealing with the committed to the cause, we're gonna deal with a very familiar passage of scripture. You hear a lot of people talk about it, but some people have not really read the word. So sometimes you gotta go into a little detail because everybody don't know the word, which is why we all need to spend more time in the word of God. But in this passage of scripture where we're getting ready to go into, uh, we're getting ready to study um, a time when uh, an enemy had risen up against the people of God. And God had already shown his glory throughout the land using the people of the children of Israel, showing that he's <laughs> able to deliver and do anything but fail. 
And this enemy, man Goliath, that was like nine or ten feet tall. Now, I had never seen a dude that tall. I've seen a dude about eight feet tall, but never about ten feet tall. That's a big dude. He probably could reach up there to that light if we ever needed it fixed, and he could fix it for us. But this man was down in the valley, and he was threatening the people of God. And everybody who was serving the Lord, all those who had seen the exploits of the Lord, had seen all that God had done, all of a sudden, real quickly, allowed this Goliath to kind of scare them and to cause them to think like, uh, man, I don't know if we're going to be able to handle this Goliath. And they were getting ready to go to war, and Goliath said, you know what? I'm going to come out, and I want you guys to pick your warrior from your side, and we're going to go to battle. And whoever wins will become the servant of the other person. And Goliath came out there with his sword and his spear, and everybody was scared. Even Saul, who was probably about six foot tall, so he, was, he, he, he towered over all the rest of Israel. But even he was afraid of going out there and fighting this Goliath. So Goliath was down there, the scripture lets us know, he was down there days just taunting the people of God. And these people were scared. But one thing we come to understand is God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us power, love, and a sound mind. And when nobody else is willing to stand up and fight the battle and because they're all scared. God knows how to go and get somebody, somebody who's been in a backdrop, somebody who's been prepared, who ain't never scared, but who's ready at a moment's notice to go to war because they've been committed to the Lord. And so we're going to study my boy David. He was an awesome man of God. So we're going to jump into it. I'm excited. First Samuel chapter 17. Now, as this is going on, David is somewhere taking, uh, taking care of the sheep. And we jump into it from here, 1 Samuel 17. And Elab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Elab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride in the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou might, mightest see the battle. So first things first. David's eldest brother begins to rebuke David. David comes down because he hears word about this enemy that is threatening the people of God. And he's coming down for the right reasons. But his brother didn't have his mind where it needed to be. His mind wasn't on the things of God. His mind was on his flesh, thinking that his brother came down here for carnal reasons. But he came down because he was about his father's business. Not everybody's about their father's business. Some people are about some other business. But David came down because he was about his father's business. David didn't come to stand around like everybody else during a battle. When a battle was going on, you can't be standing around like, man, I know he ain't talking about me. I know he ain't threatening me. I wish he would come up here saying it real far back while he's down there in the valley. I wish he would come on up here. But no, he can't hear you because he's way down there. Go on down there and say that to him. I wish he would come up here. No, they were back here scared. They were not willing to go out and battle. But David came down. Because his mind was made up. He was a man of war and he was ready to go to battle. He was about maybe 15 or 16 years old during this time. So he was a young man showing that it don't matter, you know, how old you are. God can use anybody who makes themselves available to the Lord, who is willing to be used by God. And look what David said. And David said, what have I now done? Showing that his brother was always trying to accuse him of stuff. There's always going to be people in your life, and you just got to be ready for it. That's always going to accuse you of something. There's always going to be some haters somewhere that's going to talk about you. It's all good for them to go ahead and talk about you because if they're talking about you, it shows that they ain't got nothing else to do with their life anyway. If they got enough time to talk about you and say, why are you down here? Why are you doing this? Why are you going there? Why are you doing that? If they ain't got nothing else better to do with their time, obviously the Lord then called you to do something. If they're all they're doing is spitting time thinking about you. God obviously got a call for your life. And David said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause that I've come down here? Is there not a cause that I left a few sheep with somebody else? Is there not a cause why I we need to pray? Why we need to fast? Why we need to seek the Lord? Why we need to start committing ourselves to the Lord? David was committed to the cause of the Lord. He was committed to doing the things that God would have for him to do. 
And David begins to uh, let him know, is this not a cause while I'm down here? And he goes up to Saul at, during this time when his enemy is threatening him. And he comes up to him. And look what he says to Saul. Now, he was a grown man to come up to Saul, who was a king during this time. And look what he says. And Saul, well, look what Saul says to him. Saul said to David, because David wanted to go down there and fight. He says to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. And this teaches us, never allow anyone or an enemy to estimate, underestimate what God can do through you. Never allow an enemy to try to underestimate what God is able to do. Just because you're young doesn't mean that God is not able. If you are committed to the cause, God can use anybody. He used a donkey to speak to one of the prophets who would not take heed when God told him, don't go down there. And he kept whooping a donkey and whooping a donkey because it was an angel, a flaming sword standing there. And the donkey saw it and he was like, I ain't going for it, bro. I ain't about to die for your foolishness. And he kept whooping it. And finally, God opened up the donkey's mouth and said, don't you see that there's an angel with a, a flaming sword right here, bro? Open up your eyes. This is why we all need prayer. That we would get the understanding that God ain't got to keep trying to do Stuff just keep happening where we just not get the point the first time. He didn't get it the first time. Then his eyes was open. Oh, dang, there's a flaming sword angel right there. Bro. Hey, thanks, Lord. No, you better be thankful because you could have just went forward and been sliced up in a moment's notice. So it showed right here that he was not aware of what it is that uh, God was trying to show him. And it teaches, don't let no one underestimate you if you have trust and belief in the Lord. I'm reminded of when I was in high school, I'm, I'm never really a good test taker because I believe a lot of tests uh, are kind of biased anyway. But I was getting ready to enter into high school. It was a very, very uh, uh, well-known high school. It was ranked in the nation. And, uh, you know, I came and I took the entrance exams. And uh, my counselor came to me and let me know, uh, based on your scores here, you know, it was kind of like, I don't know if you want to attend this school because it looks like you might not even graduate, let alone go to college. And I heard those type of things, and it was something that discouraged me at 15 and 16 years old. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, man, I don't know if I can go to this school, you know. It's about 2,000 students at the school. I didn't know anybody. My brother had just graduated, you know what I'm saying. But when I got there, you know, lo and behold, some people knew me because they, you know, my brother told them about me. Oh, you do well, little brother. I was like, yeah, you know, it was just the women, you know. So I was like, maybe I can't go to this school. Like, man, I appreciate this. Hey, hey, if you need anything, we can walk with us. Hey, you know, I appreciate that. He's a junior senior. That was fine, too. I wasn't saved back in this day, y'all, so I can talk about it. Gotta tell the truth and shame the devil. But going back on topic, because I don't want to get off topic. Um, in the midst of this situation, my dad was like, no, I'm still going to send you to this school. And I didn't allow what she had to say about me to discourage me into thinking that I can't excel. After the first quarter of semester, I was at the top of my class in every class. And not only did I graduate, but I went on to college, got my degree, got my master's. And if I could, I would go back. If the Lord brought it, and we need prayer. If the Lord brought that counselor back to my mind, if he gave me a word of knowledge, I would go right back to her. Like, uh, yeah, I want to show you these things. Oh, who are you? You were the person that told me that I wasn't going to graduate, let alone go to college. But the Lord is graceful, and he's loving, and he ain't brought her to mind of who she is. Otherwise, I would go back and show her. Showing that you don't underestimate the people of God or what God can through 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 somebody. All you got to do is trust the Lord. And look what David said after Saul said this to him. He said, and David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. So David said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a testimony. First of all, don't underestimate me. I'm committed to the cause. And let me show you how committed I am to the cause. I kept my father's sheep, showing that I protected them and I was faithful over what God put me over. So David begins to give a testimony that I was faithful and I kept my father's sheep. I kept them. I protected them. I did everything that my father wanted me to do because he had made an investment in these sheep and he counted on me to stand faithful and to watch over them just as the Lord has watched over us and he's came he's died for our sins and he is resurrected and that he has put 
people over us to watch over us so that when any lions or any bears or anything tries to slip in, we are aware of the lions and the bears that slip in and we're not intimidated by them, but we're committed to the cause and if they slip on in, I ain't afraid of you. I see you where you are and I'm not afraid to knock you out in Jesus' name, not with the fist, but spiritually out of this place from trying to hinder the people of God. I'm committed to the cause. I'm even reminded of a time I put up there Miami's Bible study showing how committed uh, to the cause we should be. I reminded of uh, years ago when Kevin was teaching Bible study at multiple campuses. I was traveling with him, y'all. He was on a move. He was going from Miami to Wright State to coming down here teaching at UC. Sometimes Ohio State had him up there. He came over to NKU, y'all. He was everywhere. And there was a time, i say about 2008, there was a young man who was the president of the Bible study, and the Bible study was up and down. They had a few people, and sometimes they had a lot, but uh, there was a young man in there, and I love the Lord for him, my good friend Cam, who had went over to China. He was faithful to the Lord in that Bible study. He didn't worry about the numbers and, and what other people were saying. He was committed to the Bible study, and one day, he decided, you know what, how about we're going to go out, we're going to start canvassing about this Bible study. And it was during uh, one of those holidays, St. Patrick's Day, when the people was going to be out there drinking and doing all this crazy stuff. And he said, you know what, I'm committed to this cause, and I'm going to go out. I'm not intimidated by what I see, because my faith is in the Lord. And he called Kevin up and said, look, we about to go out, we're going to pass out these flyers. And Kevin was like, bet, I'm coming up. And then he told a few people in the Bible study, mind you, I had just been saved for about a about a couple years same for Chris so we was all on fire and Kev made the call hey they're going up there to pass out flyers you with it bro let's go road trip and we went up there and we were so excited for the Lord we weren't concerned about the people that was out there drinking we went out there with our minds committed to the cause of the Lord for the Bible study for the word of God to continue to go for and those people was out there crazy we passed out flyers and hey dude we want you to come to the Bible study dude I love Jesus, you know what I mean? They was out there laughing, they was drunk, but you know, you know, we was out there witnessing to them and Ken. Like, y'all know the school song? Y'all know the school song? Let's sing it. You know, they all didn't know the song. They started screaming, singing a few words. They was drunk. And then Ken forgot the words, so he was just kind of singing along with them. But he passed out the flyers. He was committed to the cause. And Cam was so committed to the cause that he didn't worry about what the Bible study looked like. He wanted to make sure that before he left that campus, that the word of God spread on that campus. Even if one person came out of all those flyers, he was committed to the cause and we was committed with him. Because people was getting saved up there, coming down to abundant life. And we was like, bro, we coming up there with y'all. We was praying with people out there. We was on fire for the Lord. And we was committed to that cause, no matter what. We had a testimony that went forth. And David gives a testimony of what he did while being a keeper of his father's sheep. And look what he said. I went out after him, and I smote him, and delivered it out of the mouth, out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Now, you got to be a grown man for a lion and a bear. It doesn't talk about it was a little, little, little bitty cub that you can take a picture of that you see people on TV. Oh, look at the little cub. We take a little picture. Like, people crazy. I never do that because the mama is somewhere else and you're going to become their dinner. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't let it be known that it was some little cub. No, it was a full grown lion and bear that came in. But David was so committed to the cause that he said, I caught him by his beard and killed him. And he smoked a bear. If I saw that type of testimony, I would have been like, bro, this man, the Lord has got to be on his side. For you to grab a bear, a full grown bear and kill him, the Lord has to be on your side. And he gives Saul a testimony of what the Lord did in his life. You can learn a lot from a position that God puts you in. It's a good it's good to sometimes examine where God has put you and say what have I learned from this position that God has put me in. 
and, and especially what is it that I have learned based on the things that are going on in my life? What is it that God wants me to see in this position, even in an outreach position? What is it that the Lord wants me to see? Outreach is something where you reach beyond what's normal. You go beyond the norm of everything else. What is it that God is teaching me? In the storms and the trials that I'm going through, what is it he wants me to learn? Because he didn't have me in this position just to be in it. God knew before the foundations of the world that I would be in this position. And it's preparing me for something. David was being prepared before God put him in charge of kingdoms. He put him in charge of sheep and things like that to see if he can be faithful and committed to the things of God. If he can be committed to what God did right here. That when it comes time to the next level, he won't be intimidated by what comes his way. Because he's fully persuaded that if my God can deliver me from a lion and a bear, surely he's able to do anything but fail. I've tried him for myself. So have you killed a lion and have you killed a bear? No, you have not done that. So he leaves this testimony and look what he says. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he has defied the armies of God. David was so committed and invested uh, that he put Goliath in the same category as the animals. That's something right there. He didn't let his problem look bitter, bigger than the God that we serve, like a lot of people do. Sometimes it can blow up a problem so big that you allow it to look bigger than the God that we serve. But David didn't do that. And what it teaches here is that sometimes God will put you in a position to see if you can remain committed under pressure. Can you remain committed in the midst of things going on in your family, in the midst of things going on in school, in the midst of things going on around you, things going on in other people's lives? Can you remain committed to the cause under the pressure when the lion and the bear comes? Can you remain committed to the cause? David remained committed to the cause and he let it be known that this uncircumcised Philistine is going to be just like what I did to the bear and to the lion. And he said, David said, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. This is a testimony, y'all. And out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with you. He said, the same, the Lord, that same Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. The same Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same Lord that delivered this person. The same Lord that allowed this person to graduate. The same Lord that saved somebody else's granddaughter on a Sunday morning when she stood in line and the Lord spoke to her and said, Today is your day that you will receive the Holy Ghost. The same Lord that provided for somebody else's financial aid when they were struggling and didn't know if they was going to make it. The same Lord that provided for people's finances when they didn't think that they was going to make it, that they was going to be evicted. The same Lord that broke bondages in somebody else's life, that healed somebody from cancer. He is the same Lord. He is the same Lord. The same Lord that allows Evangelist Mathis to get up at almost 80 years old and preach the gospel. The fact that he has kept her all this time and has given her a numerous testimony. The same God that brought her from a mighty long way. He is the same God that will do the same things for me. I'm committed to the cause. David said that the same Lord that delivered me from the lion, the same Lord that delivered me from the bear, he will deliver me. This is a testimony of why it's so important to be committed to the cause of the Lord, to be committed. And look what Saul says to him. He tells him to go and may the Lord be with you. He tells him to go. He was fully persuaded that the Lord had his back and that the Lord would deliver. And look what he says, y'all. Now, this was a word right here. I would have loved to just go back and see this. Just, I ain't even got to be in the battle because I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? You know, they had different weapons back in the day and people would be getting hit with random arrows and things like that. So I wouldn't want to get hit by anything. I would just want to see it. You know, if they were one of the angels so I could be protected. You know what I'm saying? So it don't affect me in this realm. But look what he says. He said, then said David to the Philistine, when he went down to fight him, thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, 
the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. I'm coming to you in the name that is above all names. He came to Goliath, letting it be known, you're coming to me with all these carnal things, but I'm coming to you with the name that is above all names. I'm coming to you with somebody whose name has power and has weight behind it. There's testimonies behind the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus has done some mighty things in the lives of the people of God. The name of Jesus can do anything. It can break bondages, strongholds. It can bring people out. He said, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And he went out there with five smooth stones for y'all who don't know the story. And he threw one of them and hit this ten foot tall giant in his head knocked him off. He said, I'm going to take your sword and I'm going to cut your head off with your sword. Do you know how bold that you have to be? How committed that you have to be? To the cause of the Lord, but David was fully persuaded that the Lord was going to make a way. And he stood over the life and cut his head off. Now you can imagine all oh, the bandwagon people back in the back, like, yeah, it was my boy David Brown. You know what I'm saying? Who else wants some? No, no, no. If anybody got a problem, you let me know. Like Smokey and Friday you have to pray and not do that. If anybody else got a problem, you let me know. You know, like he was really gonna do something anyway. He wasn't gonna do nothing. He was standing back with the girls. You know what I'm saying? So he was afraid too. So all you can imagine, they was all back there excited about it. But it really showed that when you're committed to the cause of the Lord and that you put your trust in the Lord that the Lord can do anything. God can bring you out of mighty places when you put your trust in the Lord. So David was the first one. The next one is my boy and I told y'all a break. The Lord had me. I don't know why. I'm going back through the Bible again. Just trying to read the whole Bible and it's good to do that every year. Just for familiarizing yourself with the word of God because God gives you fresh revelation all the time about things that you might not have seen the first time because you go you go from levels to levels so you get a greater understanding and it's good to go back and study. So Nehemiah, and during this time, the walls had been torn down and they were working to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and to rebuild what it was that was torn down because of the sins of the people and Nehemiah and them had a mind to work. But there was enemies that was coming against them. And there's always, again, there's always going to be enemies. The devil got to play his part, y'all. He always, he got to play his part in the movie. You know what I mean? He got to be the antagonizer. He got to be the one that comes against you, that causes you to have to pray, that causes you to have to fast, that causes you to have to believe God. He, he playing his role. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, he'll be in hell, you know what I'm saying, burning for, you know, lake of fire for eternity. But he played his part, and we got to play our part in trusting the Lord. And this is what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah trusted in the Lord. And so they set out to do this work for the Lord. And look what it says here. So build we the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. Nehemiah and the people were so committed, no matter the opposition, that he was committed to the cause. Because the people had a mind to build. It's amazing what you can do when you set your mind to it. It's amazing the things that you can accomplish when you trust in the Lord and your mind is set on things above and not beneath. When your trust is, you have so much faith in the Lord that God can do anything right now but fail. I trust the Lord and I'm committed to the cause. I put up here something that I always talk about many times. All of us have been commissioned to run a 26.2 mile race. Everybody in this room has been commissioned to run a 26.2 mile race back to heaven. And as you run it, you get a lot of people, you get the photographers taking pictures, you got people stopping to get some water, you got people stopping to see what Beyonce or Jay-Z is doing, you got people stopping to like, hey, get the selfie, you know what I mean? So it's on Facebook, you got people doing all type of things during this race and then you get a lot of people that stop off in this race because they run it like it's a sprint when it's not a sprint it's a long distance run and you got to endure the whole race you got to pace yourself in this race and in this uh this story right here it teaches us the importance of enduring and not giving up when opposition comes against you. Nehemiah and them had opposition that was coming up against them, but they were committed to the cause of the Lord. And look what happened. 
When all these enemies came up against them, Tobiah and Sambalot, they came up, they was hating on them, saying, man, y'all not going to finish this. We're going to come against you. When you're not looking, we're going to come and we're going to kill some of the people in the camp. This is why having your spiritual radar on at all times is so important. Because the enemy is always looking for an opportunity to take you out. And it's so important to keep your mind on the work of the Lord. I'm even reminded of a time years ago that there was a young man in here, and I ain't going to say his name, but, you know, you, you never want to be an example in a Bible study, but, you know, he, he, he might not ever know that, I'm, you know, I'm mentioning him, but he had to be an example. He was an enemy. And one day, he came in, and, you know, we spent time with him trying to give him the word, and he would always, that's why we got to know the word, he would always hack up the word. Every time he raised his hand, it didn't matter what I was doing. I could be saving somebody's life. I stopped everything that I was doing every time he raised his hand to say anything because every time he said something, he hacked up the word of God. And one day he came in and he was talking to us and he was like, you know what? He said, man, if y'all stop talking about this Holy Ghost business and that Bible study, y'all get a lot more people in there. Just stop talking about, stop talking about this and that. Just, just talk about love and all this type of stuff. And I told him, you know what? To keep it real with you, I, I, I would rather have 10 or 15 on fire Holy Ghost filled people than to have six, seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand lukewarm, watered down people that just want to hear stuff that feels good. When you go to the doctor, you don't always want to hear this, oh, everything is going good when you got cancer. Does anybody want to know that you're doing good if you got cancer? No, you want to hear, but you got cancer. It's all through your body. You don't want to hear, hey, yeah, but you're doing good. You know, how's the kids? You know, how's that golf swing? It's going good. All right, well, I'll see you in six months. Keep up the good work. Keep on no. eating. You know what I mean? You've been eating good. Maybe we can come out there and be on a golf course together. You don't want to hear that nonsense. You want to hear the truth. You want him to diagnose you and tell you the truth. And I had to let him know that we're not going to water down the word in here. I don't care how many people come out. We're going to speak the word of God because at the end of the day, we're going to give an account for the word of God. And I'm not going to be the one that's going to be in that line with those people that watered down the word. Because I don't know what the punishment is going to be. But I know that I'm going to speak the word of God and tell people the truth. Even if I get persecuted, you know, they're going to persecute me. But when they take me out, they're going to be left with them stood alone, like I always say. They can take me out, I'm going to be in heaven. There ain't no loans in heaven. The Lord ain't at the gate saying, oh, bro, you got a, a balance due. You know what I'm saying? You can't get in until you pay this balance. No, I ain't going to be none of that mess in heaven. Every, it's free access. So I was committed to the cause and we were committed to the cause to not allow the word to be watered down to make people feel good. And Nehemiah was committed to the cause and when these enemies came against them and the people started getting afraid, look what Nehemiah said. And I looked and rose up and said to the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not afraid of them, but remember the Lord which is great and terrible. He tells them, don't be afraid of what your enemies are saying against you. Don't be afraid of what things look like. Remember the Lord, who is terrible and he's mighty in battle. And fight for your brethren and your sons and your daughters and your wives and your houses. Fight for your brethren. Fight for your brothers and sisters. Pray for them that need deliverance. Those that are falling away. Pray for them because they need healing and deliverance. Pray for your family members. If you've been praying for them, don't stop praying for them. Pray uh, and trust in the Lord. Even when problems are coming up against you, begin to pray and pray. Have a, a prayer wall and circle the prayer wall around your problem and let it be known like the walls of Jericho that you're coming down in the name of Jesus. I circle my problem with prayer and I believe God that it's going to come down and it's not going to get the best of me. Don't be moved by mountains or storms but keep praying and uh, cause your prayer wall to cause you to trust and believe that God is going to bring down the things that are coming against you. I put up there also about a dream I told Sister Monica about about probably about a year ago that the Lord gave me a dream that there was people standing outside the doors of the church um, no, not the doors of the church but you know how when they have a prayer and they shut the doors and it's about 11.59 and they, you know people getting in there late and they're having prayer and they shut them little doors well there was a line of people 
outside those doors, all the way down the hallway, around the corner, all the way to the back sanctuary, all the way downstairs. There was all these people who were standing there waiting to get into the church. And I saw my brother in the midst of that crowd too. And I'm like, man, this is something. All these people that's waiting to get into the sanctuary. I got to be committed to the cause. Because who knows whose mom or daddy in this Bible study is going to be in that crowd. Who knows who's in there. I got to be committed to the cause. I got to fight for my brothers and sisters. I got to pray for those next to me. I got to pray for you. Because who knows um, what the uh, Lord may want to do in your life and in the lives of your family members. And Nehemiah encourages the people of God to fight, fight. Don't just give in and allow yourself to just be knocked over and to die, but fight for them. If you're going to go down, at least go down fighting. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be a soldier. You know, I ain't going to just lay down and die. I guess it's just meant for me to die. No, I'm going to go out like a soldier. I'm going to at least go out sweet. I'm gonna, I, I got to at least hit a few people. I ain't that tall, but I'm going to at least probably, uh, you know, knock some people in the gut or something. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go out like a champion, like David. You know what I'm saying? And look what it says in verse 15. And it came to pass that when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. The enemy plotted against them, but God made it known unto them. And it shows that when you commit it to the cause, the Lord will let you know what the enemy is trying to do. The enemy can't pull a fast one on the people of God. God is aware of what's going on and when we are committed to the cause, God will give you revelation and understanding. And something else I wanted to point here said that once God revealed it, that we return all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work, which shows that everybody has got work to do. It don't matter what it is, everybody's got something to do. Everybody, as Bishop always talks about, everybody got to stay in their lanes. Everybody can't be a chief. Some people got to be Indians. And those that's Indians got to work in your lane being that Indian and doing the work that God would have you to do. Like Nehemiah was dealing with these people. Everybody's got a work to do. And if you're committed to the cause, the Lord will protect you. He will give guidance and wisdom. I put up there about Paul. When they threatened to kill Paul, Paul was in jail, y'all. And, you know, he was preaching the word and was in jail. And they, they plotted to kill Paul. And they hated Paul so much. This shows you how wicked you are. They got all together, and they said, this, this is just wicked. Now, we fast for the right reasons, not the wrong reasons. They all fasted together and said, we are not going to come off this fast till Paul is dead. Now, that's, that's just wicked. That's why we all need prayer. We need to pray for people. They said, we're going to fast till Paul is dead. And Paul's sister's son or nephew just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And he came and told Paul what was going to happen. And he told the soldier. And they let Paul down through the window. And you can imagine, you know, you know, I would have wanted to go back and laugh at him and see how long they was fasting. Like, you know, <laughs> bro, is it day 15? You wait for Paul to be killed. Like, bro, that's why you go. You wait for Paul. You on day 50? You still fasting? Y'all probably thinned out. You know what I mean? Y'all still fasting? Y'all looking like skeletons, you know? <laughs> May have thinking, you know, you might not make it. You know, I might have went back to laugh at him and then ask the Lord to take me back so I don't get stoned or something. You know what I mean? I stand for the Lord. I Lord take me back. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But Paul was committed to the cause and God had the right person at the right place at the right time. So God is mindful of his people and he's committed. When we're committed to the cause, God is committed to us. And it's so important that we remain committed to him. And when we do, God has got our back. He'll put somebody on the sideline to watch our love. Hey, bro, don't go down this alley, man. They've been knifing people left and right, bro. You need to go around it longer. Hey, bro, I appreciate it, man. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much enough for brother. The Lord is mindful. Well, look what it says here. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants brought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears and the shields and the bows and the habergeons, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. So half the people worked, and half of them held their weapons ready to go to war at a moment's notice. Sean, again, we all got work to do. And Nehemiah understood that these half need to be over here working, and these half over here need to have their weapons ready right now to go forth and do the things 
of God. No matter what enemy comes up against us, we are committed to the cause. And they ended up building this wall, y'all. And when the enemies heard about it, the Bible says that they got afraid, y'all. They got scared. And this is what our enemy will do. Our enemy is a punk anyway. He walks around like a roaring lion. He ain't a lion, but he walks around like he's a lion. He looks for people who are weak and those who are not committed to the Lord, who allow him to push them around like they're a rag doll. And like they're nobody. But when you understand who you are in the Lord, like, girl, you ain't about to stop me from what the Lord. I didn't been through too much. I didn't face too much. I didn't have to go through too much to give up. Now I might as well keep on going. I'm already halfway there. I might as well keep on going. Why turn back now? I might as well keep on being committed. Because there must be something up, up here. I would hate to die and get an incomplete. You know what I mean? I hate to have to hear the Lord say, you almost made it and you gave up at the finish line. When you all you had to do was just die forward and you would have made it. I don't want to be that one. No, I'm going to run and keep on running. If, I, if my form and everything is just off, I'm going to make it across the finish line and finish no matter what the enemy has to say about it. So Nehemiah teaches us being committed to the cause. David teaches us being committed to the cause. And last but not least, the last one we're going to talk about, the apostles. The ones who the Lord called to go forth and preach the gospel. Now, can you imagine these 12 going forth and having to go and evangelize the whole entire world? Do you understand how much confidence God had to have in, in you for you to go to the entire world? Well, wow, that's something right there. Like, that's some faith right there. But the Lord knew that they would be committed to the cause. And look what it says. As they were preaching the gospel, people were coming against them, especially the, the, the Jews and Pharisees and Sadducees. And look what it said. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest, and they asked them. So the apostles were preaching, and they were brought before the council. And it really echoes how, even in these last days, that believers, as Christians, that we will be persecuted. That even in other countries, people are persecuted right now by having gatherings like this. Like people are being killed and thrown into dungeons. And, you know, sometimes we can take this for granted for coming in here and gathering. But people, they wish they could gather like this on a daily basis and, and hear the word of God. But they don't get that privilege. But they're committed to the cause to preach the word of God no matter what's going to come their way. And the apostles were like this. And they were put before them. Now, look what they said, y'all. Now, this really hit me, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It really got to me. I had to step back for a minute. It said, saying... Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? Now, when I read this, I had to really search this scripture because just thinking about me, you know, I had to look and see, were there any kids around here? You know what I'm saying? Was there any, you, know, look, you know, maybe some adolescents running around? Because last time I checked my date of birth, I'm 31 years old and I'm a grown man. And for you to say, did I tell you that to preach or teach in this. Now, like, hold on, hold on, bro. You know, I might have been that one in the crowd. Man, they might not have said bro back in the day. Or said, who are you talking to? But man, I know I probably would have been the one like, hold on, wait a minute. Who are you talking to like that? Like, is there somebody? Am I being pumped? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? Did you not, did I not command you to stop teaching in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Now the Lord had taught them what the truth was. And gave them the truth to go forth and to preach the word of God. And they're going to say, you have filled this place with your doctrine. It didn't come from God, it's your doctrine. And look how Peter responds. They were so committed to the cause. Look what they said. Then Peter and the apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. My prayer is that if it ever comes to a point where I ever have to get persecuted or it comes to a point where they say, didn't we tell y'all over there at that Bible study to stop preaching the name of Jesus? Didn't we tell you to stop teaching that stuff that you're teaching? Then I would have the boldness and the, the fire of the Holy Ghost to say, should I obey man or should I obey God? And my, that would be my prayer for all of us, that we would have that boldness, that even under the pressure, even if it's just us, that we would not just 
fit in with the crowd and just blend in and be scared to stand up for the name of Jesus, but that we would be committed to the cause, that to live is Christ and to die is great gain. Amen. If I die, I'm going to be seeing the Lord. He got a crown for me anyway and a mansion. There ain't nobody going to break in it. They ain't going to steal my clothes, my shoes. The Lord got stuff up there for me, a food that I never had before. Bro, I'm, I'm ready to go. Bro, kill me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You take me all you're doing is hastening the blessings that got with my name on it. You know, Elder D sing that song with my name on it. My name is on it in heaven. And all you're doing is just hastening what God has asked for me. So I'm committed to this cause. And they say, should we obey God or should we obey man? And look what they said. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So they begin to leave a testimony that God has exalted him and put him at the right hand. And the right hand is a place of all power and authority. Many people confuse that thinking that you got the Father right here and you got Jesus over here. Then you got the Holy Ghost running around heaven somewhere. <laughs> no, it's all one. The place of uh, the right hand is a place of all power and authority. Jesus is sitting with all power and authority. The Jews understood that when it said that he's sitting at the right hand. They understood that that's blasphemy because that's taking the place of God, saying that he's God, that he has all power. They understood that. People today who don't read, they don't study the word, they read. The Bible don't say read to show yourself approved unto God. It says study to show yourself approved unto God. If they would do more studying rather than reading, they would get understanding of what the word is saying rather than giving people nonsense. So he said that he has made him a prince and a savior to give repentance to Israel and a forgiveness of sins. Only the Lord can forgive your sins. It can't be good works. It can't be higher levels of consciousness. It can't be, well, I believe I'm a good person. You know, I don't kill, I don't shoot. I didn't stab nobody. I don't cheat on my taxes. I don't cheat on my wife. You know, I'm a good person. It can't be based on your standards because man's standards are not God's standards. And people today will look at, 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 at the standards and say, well, you know, I think I'm a pretty good person. But God says all have sinned and fallen short. So ain't nobody good. And it shows that everybody needs to come through the blood. And look what it says here. Peter and leave a testimony, y'all. And we are his witnesses of these things. The apostles were the witnesses of who Jesus was. And he died and rose from the grave. And not only were they witnesses, but look what they say right here. This is a powerful scripture that sometimes I don't always visit, but we need to visit this sometimes. Because people need to hear this sometimes. Because they don't, they don't, they, they wonder well, why God ain't done this and why God ain't done that. Look what he says here. Not only were they witnesses, and it says, and so also is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that do what? Obey that him. obey Him. God has given the Holy Ghost to those that obey Him. So the Holy Ghost is a witness to the things that Jesus has done. That who Jesus is, what He did, and how He came to earth. He gives it to those who obey Him. When He says you got to give this up or you got to give that up, you holding something back. The Lord is always there. He ain't, it ain't like He's got to come in and out of anywhere. He's He's everywhere all at the same time. But He's waiting on us to submit and give everything to Him. It ain't never Him. It's always us. We always. Got to do inventory and see, what is it in me, Lord, that's hindering me from receiving your spirit and what you have for me? And they were committed to this cause, letting it be known that the Holy Ghost is a witness that Jesus did visit this earth. That Jesus did die for our sins. It doesn't matter what anybody else has to say about it. That the Holy Ghost is a witness that our God is real. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles... And beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Many people have a problem with the name of Jesus, but they ain't got a problem with Buddha. They ain't got a problem with saying Allah. They ain't got a problem with Confucius, Nostradamus. They ain't got no problem. But when you start talking about Jesus and the Bible, all of a sudden, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. You know, so you preaching that religion, but you just, you could come in with the Quran and talking about that. At certain places, but don't let Christianity slip in because what it does is that it separates and lets it be known that there's only one way. 
There's not many ways to get to God. There's one way. Oprah's wrong. There's one way to get to God. And everybody's got to come through the blood. Not good works. You've got to come through Jesus to make it into heaven. And everybody don't want to hear that. But the truth hurts, but it's for our good. And he let, um, after they had been beaten, look what it said. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They were so committed to the cause that they began to rejoice at the fact that I can suffer for the name of Jesus. Yeah. To be able to just be excited at the fact that I was counted as somebody that could suffer for the name of Jesus. I'm not even worthy to be saved, let alone be delivered and be on my way to heaven. But the fact that the Lord counted me to be one of them that would just suffer a little bit. The things that we go through cannot even, they pale in comparison to the things that Jesus went through. He was beaten to a point where you couldn't even recognize him. All of his bowels and things like that were exposed and we go through things sometimes and I'm, I'm one of them too. And we get to complaining about things and crying and like, why I gotta go through this? Why I gotta suffer that? But if you can imagine what Jesus had to really go through. If the Lord just took you back there for about 10 seconds and for you to just feel what he was going through, it would change your perspective about the things that you're going through. That it's just a light affliction. That I'm going through. But it's just, it's just a vapor. That in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, I'm going to be changed. And everything I went through worked together for my good. And though I, I may have wanted to give up, because I stay committed to the cause, God has got a crown laid up for me. And the disciples were excited because they were counted worthy. And the Lord had something for them. And look what it said. And daily in the temple. Not sometimes. Not from time to time. Not when you feel like it. Not when... You know, when the most opportune time is for you. It said daily and in every house. That means wherever they went, they ceased not to teach and to preach Jesus. They did not stop. They were so committed to the cause that no matter where they went, they left a testimony about who Jesus was. They were committed to the cause. It reminds us to be committed to the cause of the Lord. No matter what may come our way, being committed to the cause. The Lord was the first example teaching all of us the importance of being committed to the cause. He went through some horrific things. And just like a lot of y'all who take classes in here, a lot of you have a syllabus, you have a classes and things that you have to go through. You got four years, five years, six years. The Lord had a syllabus of things he had to go through. He came through 40 and two generations. Matthew chapter one. He took his first test when he was tempted in the wilderness. Matthew chapter four. On his way to his medical exam, he brought forth sight to a man by the name of Blind Bartimaeus, who through his whole life was blind. In Mark chapter 10, um, not only did he uh, run in late to his biology 101 uh, lab because he got caught up in a crowd, while he was in the crowd, he brought forth healing to a woman who for 12 years was gradually losing her life. In Mark chapter 9, verse 22, he aced his psychology and philosophy exams and taught his professors, a.k.a. the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that the real search for knowledge and truth is wrapped up and tied up in him in Matthew chapter 9. And he managed to make it over to the courthouse and convince a group of angry jurors with rocks in their hands and evidence before them not to stone a woman caught in the very act of committing adultery in John chapter 8. And before the day was over with, he managed to grab himself some sleep at a man named Zachariah's house in the book of uh, Luke chapter 19. And he took his final exam when he was crucified and said, it is finished in John chapter 19. And he graduated from Heaven University with flying colors when he got up out the grave three days later, declaring all power is in his hand in the book of Matthew chapter 19. And so in three and a half years, I'm in the book of Matthew chapter 28. So in three and a half years, he was committed to the cause and he had a syllabus of things to do, but he was committed to the cause of what he was sent to do. He didn't allow anything to hinder him. He followed the syllabus to a T and he accomplished it in three and a half years. 
So we have no excuse that we can't accomplish what it is the Lord has for us. If we are committed to the cause of what the Lord would have us to do and not get distracted by anything, but keep our minds set on, I got to complete what it is God has for me to do. And I have a syllabus called the Word of God that's right here before me. And it lays out everything I need to do to make it to heaven. I'm committed to this no matter what. If my father can do it and I'm his child, surely I can do it too because I'm like him. I have his spirit in me. So it encourages us today to be committed to the cause no matter what comes our way, our way, being committed to the cause. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm done. Yeah.